Hi, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. This is Jill. Have you ever wondered how you can take your multifaceted life and turn it into a powerful career? Today, we're going to talk about what to do now that you know that you're a generalist. The sky isn't the limit. The sky has no limit. Sarah Barker, astrophysicist. Today, we're going to pick up on the second part of How to Be Everything, a guide for those who still don't know what they want to be when they grow up by Emily Wapnick. This time, we're going to talk about the career aspect or the entrepreneurial aspect of being everything and using your generalist skills to find happiness and fulfillment at work. She references an article by Adam Grant, who writes a lot of really good books. But this article was called Originals, How Nonconformists Move the World. And this was in the New York Times. And he said that there's a strong correlation between having many interests and producing really innovative work. She referred to a book by Barbara Sher called Refuse to Choose. And she said that being a person who's a multi-potentialite is like being an orchestra conductor. Everything is coming in at the same time, and that conductor has to make sure that all the parts are playing the right thing at the right time with the right sounds, get very good at managing multiple things at the same time. She said that in general, people who are good at many things are people like Aristotle, who was a physician and a philosopher, or Benjamin Franklin, who was interested in lightning rods and potbelly stoves and glasses, and he was a librarian and a post office guy. And Leonardo da Vinci, again, because he was an artist, an inventor, he was interested in human biology, in math, he was interested in architecture, he even built weapons, but he was interested in many things. So she asked the question, What is the ideal career for someone who is a multi-potentialite? Should we be like Leonardo and be an artist? Or should we be an inventor like Benjamin Franklin? Should we go into the arts? And she said, really, there is no single path that we can go on and do many different things. We have to find the thing that interests us because that's really what's going to make us good at what we're trying to do. And she talks about that whenever we're trying to design our lives, we have to look at three different things, money, meeting, and variety. And that's how someone who has a lot of skills and likes to be a generalist finds what thing is right for them. She suggests that you can look at variety in a job because that's what's going to help a generalist feel excited about their work. By looking at variety inside of a job, so a job that has a lot of different skills and a lot of different methods for them to use their knowledge or having multiple jobs. Think about it as you work regularly in one thing and you have a hobby as a podcaster or you have a hobby as a zookeeper, whatever it is, but you can either find a job that gives you the variety or find jobs that give you a variety. She asked you to think about times when you felt uninspired or bored. How many projects were you working on and whether these projects were specialized? Were they interdisciplinary? Because I think you'll find out that a lot of times when you find yourself bored or uninspired, it might be because you're doing the same thing too often or for too long. And then she wants you to think too, is there ever a time when you got completely overwhelmed? Is there a point where too many things are too much for you? And I found that to be my case. I think where I got better at being someone who's a generalist is when I learned not to go too far. When I was in my 20s, I was just picking up new hobbies and new skills and new books and new areas, one right after the other. And it got to be too much, not too much for my brain. I didn't feel overwhelmed. I thought I was managing them rather well. But at some point, there were so many of them that I really didn't become good at anything. And I really started faltering with many of them. So I learned while it's good to have many things, you can get to the point where you have too many things and you have to find out from your point of view, what's too many. She says that our lives need experimentation and that's where we try things, pick new things up. It's important for us to reflect. Are we being overwhelmed? Are we bored? And then we can add and subtract projects to a level that makes us feel satisfied. So really experiment with that to try to figure out How many things is too many things? 
So then she gives us a couple of work models. The first one she calls is the group hug approach, which means it's having a multifaceted job or a business that allows you to wear many different hats. And this job is interesting to me because I think that's the kind of job I have. When I started at my current company, I was the 36th employee. And so you had to do everything because there were not enough employees to get everything done, which was great. I got to dabble in at least four other careers that were not the job I was hired to do, but it gave me a taste of it. And I tell you what, there's a couple out there I haven't done yet and I got my eyes on them. But the question is, is can you get a job that lets you do many things? Now, as I work as a consultant, I get to do a lot of things. I get to try a lot of things. And every contract is brand new and gives me a brand new chance to try something new. The second work model she calls is the slash approach. So that's when you have a job that has basically two different titles or more. So maybe you're the business owner slash accountant or the business owner slash salesperson. You're the HR person slash the finance person. Whatever it is, you have some kind of job that lets you alternate frequently between different roles. And then you're able to find a couple of topics and specialize in just a few things so that you really can get excited about your job because it's challenging you on multiple levels with multiple skills. And the nice thing about these two types of jobs is it gives you that stability that you may want, that you have a set job, that you know where you go to work every day, that hopefully you have some job security, while at the same time giving you the flexibility and the very tasks to make you better at it. That's kind of the model, like I said, I'm in, and I feel comfortable there because I know where I work, I know I have a job, and I get to do a lot of different things. The third work model she calls the Einstein approach. Einstein had a full-time job that paid all the bills for him, but then he had enough money time and energy left over to pursue all his scientific endeavors. So this gave him the chance to really explore the things that he really loved while being financially supported and having his career. And his career gave him the stability and the money in order to allow him to pursue his many different interests. He was able to work as a teacher and work in the patent office. When he worked in the patent office, that gave him that experience that he needed in order to run experiments and fully master a technology. It allowed him to also analyze a number of devices, which gave him an understanding about how actual machines worked. And then the fourth model, she called the Phoenix. And the Phoenix is having a lot of different jobs with a lot of different tasks, and then switching quite frequently over time. You'll be able to become really obsessed with one area, work on one or two jobs at that time, and then move on to something else. And she said that you're able to go in deep with a particular topic. Maybe it makes people think that you're a specialist in a particular area, but it's right before you're going to move on to something else and pick a different job entirely. You know, you've seen people who will become a chef and then they'll work in a business and they'll become a CEO and then they'll retire and they'll become an artist and they go on from one thing to another. Someone who looks from the outside in might say that that person is just picking a bunch of random things, but all these things are working together and blending together. And that's what she calls smooshing. And that's when you take all these different things and smoosh them together. So she gives some strategies about how to work as a person who loves to be a generalist and be interested in so many different things. She says, first of all, Try to find an an interdisciplinary field that requires you to have an understanding of multiple things. I think working in the software world is a good example of that. When you work in software, you have to be a business analyst, product support person, a trainer. You have to know how to write up development cases. You have to be able to troubleshoot things. It's a multifaceted job. And so there are a number of jobs out there that require you to be good at many different things. She said, too, that it's great when you work for an open-minded company. I think my company's pretty open-minded because it never tried to put me in a box. It allowed me to grow in a way that took in all the different areas I was good at. And if you can find a company that will allow you to do the same, I think you'll be happier at it. She said the next strategy is making an existing job more plural. 
So what happens if you do have a job and you got kind of pigeonholed in a particular area? Can you work with that company to expand that job so that they can understand you have a lot of different skills and you can do many different things? Maybe that's becoming a consultant where you're allowed to do a lot of different things. Or maybe your boss will let you take on several different loosely related areas and let you run them. I happen to think after all this time that working for small companies is your best bet when it comes to trying to find that multifaceted job. When you work for a small company, you have to do everything. She asked the question, should you try to smoosh everything together? Should you try to find that multifaceted job or pair some of these different areas together? Or should you really run multiple businesses or just do different things entirely? How much of these things do you want to smoosh? And how many of these things do you just want to keep separate? She says that sometimes you can think about your energy level. You know, if you can't get multiple jobs or maybe you shouldn't have multiple jobs because that's pretty tiring. Is it possible to have that one version of employment that's steady, that gives you sufficient income and leaves you enough time so you can pursue other things like Einstein did? And she said that if you're looking for that kind of what she calls a good enough business, that you should look at reaching out to people inside your network. Do you see other people doing what you're doing? And then try to expand your network to include other people. Try doing some volunteer or free work so that you can get experience in doing those kinds of things. Again, if you can get that sort of natural experience of doing other types of jobs, it'll help you if you decide you want to start a side job that really tackles your multifaceted personality. You can also get some training and then make sure that when you're looking at all the skills that you're learning or that you're getting, you really focus on those skills that are transferable. You know, if you get yourself in sort of a niche hobby that is hard to transfer into other things, that might not be as good if you can take your focus and your attention and make them into something that you can use other places. I already know when I came to my company how software works, how generally fields and databases work, because in my previous job, I was a system administrator. So my technical knowledge helped me learn software better and then helped me learn research better. It all goes together and is not lost knowledge. She says that we have to come out as a multi-potentialite, which means that we have to tell other people who we are. And that comes in a couple of different ways. Sometimes when you're a person who does a lot of different things, particularly if you do a lot of different jobs and a lot of different hobbies, someone will ask you at a conference, so what do you do? And the hard thing is, man, what don't I do? Now, it's easy for me because I have a job that describes my multi-focused area. I'm a consultant. And so when people hear that, they say, oh, well, you do a lot of things. And they immediately understand you do a lot of things and it's constantly changing. But if you don't have a job that is exactly like that, for example, you work at an entrepreneurial company and you're like, I do everything. I make the coffee in the morning. I get lunch for everyone at lunch, but I'm also a project manager and I'm a business analyst. Then it gets really hard to describe and you don't know what to say. So she gives you a sentence that hopefully will help you Know what to say when someone asks you the question. She says, I help blank do blank. I help our customers implement our software. Whatever it is that you have to do, but fill in that question and that'll make it easier for you to explain what it is that you do. I like this book. I thought it was really good because it helped me understand a little bit more about myself. I know now that if I get pigeonholed in one particular career or one particular area, I might be unhappy about it. I might get bored with it and I might start wanting to do something else. Summary, having many different skills makes you a valuable employee. Two, ensure that your job has variety. Three, understand when you're bored versus when you're overwhelmed and where the sweet spot is for you at work to know when you have enough projects to keep you interested. Four, experiment. Try different jobs at work or take on different committees and other assignments to give you a flavor of the other kinds of work that's out there that may interest you as well. Five, look at the work models in How to Be Everything. Do you want to have a job that just has many different tasks, like being a consultant? Or do you want to have a slash job? where it's two jobs instead of just one job, maybe a project manager slash 
technical advisor? Or do you want to have an Einstein job where it's a job that doesn't really take on your multi-talented skills, but instead allows you the money, the time, and the energy to go home and have other projects and other things that does bring out that Renaissance person inside you? Or do you want to have a career that just changes over time? You do this for a few years, you do something else for a few other years, and you keep trying new things. Whichever one of the four work models you pick, make sure it allows you to grow and do many things. Six, tell your boss that you're a multi-potentialite. Help your company understand that you're at your best when you can be allowed to do many different things and when you can use those skills to bring different groups of people together inside your company. A lot of times cohesion inside a company is hard to get and you could be that key person that brings everyone together. Challenge. Take your top 10 skills, lessons, sets of knowledge, and list them out. Then pick your three most favorite. Try to smush them together into a job. For example, if you love math, computers, and horses, could you become an accountant for a horse ranch? Or could you set up a website for people who love horses? But try to think outside the box of how you could create a career from the things you love doing. And now our fun entertainment quote comes from Into the Wild. Really? You're going to live a long time, Ron. You should make a radical change in your lifestyle. I mean, the core of man's spirit comes from new experiences. And there you are, stubborn old man, sitting on your butt. All right, that was Christopher McCandless. He brings out that having new experiences really enhances your life. But maybe start out at a state park just for a weekend and see how those new experiences work. All right, everyone, thanks for listening to the podcast. I appreciate the fact you're out there. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. And don't forget to follow or subscribe to this podcast. There's no cost for it. And go to my website, smallstepspod.com and leave a comment. There's a contact sheet there. You can also send me an email and let me know Do you have questions out there about how to do certain things or you had a question about a particular topic? Go ahead and let me know. I'd be happy to answer them for you. 